Hello, 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 it's Mitts for Sanity and welcome to my channel. Today I am doing a WIP and chat. WIP stands for work in progress. So grab whatever project, craft, chore, hobby, walking, exercise, whatever it is that you need to do for a little while and let me keep you company. So today I have changed it up a little bit from doing, normally with whip and chats, I do a large canvas project for diamond painting. But today um, I have these two Halloween themed or autumn themed things that I really need to get done. And my last Timo unboxing is when I had opened these up. So the first is this really cute owl piece that is just darling. And again, this is just from Timu, but um, it's really cute. And this is definitely, like I said, Halloween. So I'm leaning toward actually working on this one today. And then this one I love, but this can definitely be used extended through November, you know, up until Thanksgiving here in the United States. So I think I will put this one off for now. And I think we will focus on this owl is what I will do for this whip and chat. So that's what I'm working on. Again, this came from Timu. If you want to see the unboxing for that, um, that is listed in my unboxings. I'm thinking about actually making a separate playlist strictly for my Timu unboxings. Most of my Timu unboxings are time stamped as well. So you can actually easily find this particular item in the timestamps for that. The other items I'm using, I have awesome jewel tray from Bella Art Day, Nicole. They make some of my most favorite diamond painting accessories. Um, really neat couple, I go check them out. And my pen here is from, where's my pen from? My pen is Butterfly Effect Wears. Oh, it took me a hot minute there. Um, and I'm just, I'm using this pen. I like it. I've talked about how this is, you know, again, it's close to my perfect diamond painting pen. So, so close. And I have three of them now that are all really, really close to being perfect. Um, this one, I feel like is just a little bit too long. Like if we could take it down to two bumps, I would consider this perfection. Regardless, I still really, really, really love this pen. I do think it is really pretty as well. They do weekly release releases. And if I can remember, I'll link all of this information in my notes below. Um, my putty, I am using a putty that is Mary making crafts. This is Mary Mud. And the package has escaped me for a minute, but um, Mary Mud, really, really awesome putty. She is struggling a little bit right now to come out with her weekly releases just because she is expecting a beautiful baby girl in a couple of months time. And you know, pregnancy can be rough. <laughs> um, so, but she has uh, continued to work throughout her pregnancy and definitely keep an eye on her Etsy shop. All right, so let's go ahead. The way that I normally do projects like this too is I open these up. These are usually done like symbols, numbers, one through whatever. Occasionally they'll use letters. This is not like normal symbols like what you see on large canvases. Also, because these are all special drills and a small project, there are no DMC codes associated with these, as you can see. They're just numbered and here we do introduce letters like I was talking about. So what I do, I usually just go to the very first one, cut it off and I stick down all of the ones. We'll use my cute new little scissors from Timu here. Open it up. This just is the easiest way for me to go about it. You could, I mean, if you want it, especially if you think it's going to take you several sittings to get this project done, then I would consider kidding this up. But my intention is I should be able to finish this today. So I'll just go through and do one color at a time. And that is how I will proceed. This has a little plastic film on it that I need to remove. All right, so I know 
for those of you who have been following along with me for a while, it's been quite a while since I have had a whip and chat. It's been over a month. And that is something I will talk more about later on. For those of you who are new to my channel, in the past, I have been able to do whip and chats anywhere from about once a week to about once every other week rather consistently. And this is the first time ever in having my channel for well over a year now that I have not been able to produce that. Um, and like I said, I'll talk more about that in a bit. But I thought, you know, let's start with just getting you kind of caught up to date with what is going on with the family, how the kids are all doing. The last time I talked, school had only just recently started. And so, yeah, let's just dive right in. Sometimes the way that I do this is I'll start with like my oldest or my youngest child and we'll kind of go down the, the row. And I think today we will start with child number one. So my oldest, if you are brand new to this or just the fact that it's been so many weeks, she is in the ninth grade or a freshman in high school, which in the United States is like the first year of your last set of required schooling. Does that make sense? Traditionally in the United States, school is divided into, um, well, we can, we can add in like a preschool because preschool is becoming a requirement in more and more locations. So there is a, a preschool element, but then it is elementary school, which is kindergarten through typically grade five. And then there's middle school or junior high. Um, middle school is the more popular now, which is generally grades six through eight. And then we have what is called high school, which is grades nine through 12. There are some states that have or are talking about implementing like a, they call it a 14 year education, even though it really would be a 15 year education just because kindergarten is required. Um, but if you go by grades, it would be like a 14 grade education where the first two years of a community college would be paid for through public funding. And Michigan is a, the stats, the state that I live in is a long way away from actually implementing this. I do think it is a very smart idea. Um, we are an undereducated population and that's because here I am in my early 40s and I am still paying off student loans. So uh, paying off student loans and I'm really unemployed. So we, we definitely, we have an academic crisis here that is I think largely in part due to the financial crisis that higher education often creates. But that's, that's you know, that's kind of my opinion. You may totally disagree and that is fine. I'm just telling you my lived experience as well as, you know, what statistics and numbers do show um, and what some, a number of my friends have experienced as well. But anyway, that's now, <laughs> that's now a pretty elaborate little description and explanation of our education system as well as a couple of my grapes with it. So my daughter, the oldest, is indeed in her ninth grade year. She's a freshman. And I had mentioned that she was on student council. She seems to be a little bit confused as to the whole student council thing. And I need to talk to her about it because somehow she got it in her head that the only thing about student council that she's doing is she had to make a banner for homecoming week which she did do. And then she presented the banner at their homecoming assembly and she presented it during halftime, during the football game that night. Um, but it, <laughs> she is her class's secretary. So <laughs> this is an ongoing assignment. So I kind of need to talk to her and I don't really understand why, like, I, I don't know. I guess I'm just, I'm kind of confused. Like how and why did she come to this conclusion? I don't know. Anyway, she had her first homecoming. And again, if you are not from the United States, um, the homecoming tradition is 
probably a little bit foreign to you. I know that other countries do similar things, just not with this particular sport. And that is American football. We, <laughs> we love our American football. Now, here's the catch. I have, when my daughter started playing several years ago, um, which no, is not a typical girl thing to do tackle football, but she wanted to and she did. I really started following and understanding the sport and because I didn't grow up doing that. I came from a house where sports were a pretty low priority. And that is kind of unfortunate because as an adult, I realized that I love sports. Like I really do get into sports. So once I started learning football and understanding the rules and how it worked, I began to see how this game can be so appealing it and how it can be exciting to watch even though if you don't know what's going on it feels like there's a whole lot of dead time happening <laughs> you know you just whistles blown flags are thrown a bunch of guys in these ridiculous burly suit looking things with all their pads and enormous helmets just stand around on the field most of the game um which Obviously, you know, when you describe it like that, no, there's no appeal to that. But once you understand how plays are important and that there's actually quite a bit of strategy that needs to go into football, the game becomes interesting. Not, I mean, not for everybody, but it definitely did for me. Then it was like the light bulb went on and I went, oh, so there's like actual rationale and logic to this game and what it is that they're trying to do. I get it now. And so a tradition here in both high school and college is to have a homecoming game, which is at the high school level, it is a game that is usually played a few games into your season and it is a home game against a fellow team generally it will be a team that is in your same conference or like division depending on however that state's school system works out their athletics which another interesting fact <laughs> all states except two the high school athletics program is actually a department of ed thing department of education within their state Michigan, it does not work like that. Michigan is actually run by a separate entity and is funded like individually by each school. And, you know, you get that money through ticket sales and like each school needs to pay a fee in order to be part of the Michigan High School Athletic Association. And I think Nevada might be the only other state that does it that way. What that means then is being part of high school athletics is optional. Um, you don't have to be part of the MH MHSAA. Uh, just another little interesting factoid for you. <laughs> um, so anyway, you know, it is, you know, the game of the year. And then typically schools have what's called spirit week and every day of the week they dress up in something different. A lot of districts, especially smaller districts like ours, it does become an all district thing. Every single one of our school buildings do participates in a spirit week of some sort. You know, my son could dress as just something differently every single day, as well as my middle school daughters and my high school daughter. And it changes per school. It's not the same across all schools. Because, like, the high school, they did, they had, like, a Ken and Barbie day. Where you dress like Ken and Barbie. Um, not quite as appealing in the elementary school. Usually, though, on Friday, it does end with some kind of dress in your class colors or dress in school colors is how Friday usually ends. And actually in our district, it's kind of always encouraged to dress in school colors on Fridays. And as a teacher, you get to wear jeans as long as you are wearing a school shirt. So that part I do enjoy. <laughs> 
And of course, most of my school apparel is wrestling related. And so last Friday I did sub and I was hopeful. You know what? That's right. I do remember that. There was one part on here. I think this, I think I do remember this now from my unboxing. Um, there was one part on here that somehow glue had come off. And I commented that I would have to probably put, apply some glue. And that is right there. I wonder if I can get it to just sit there. And then if I apply the sealant, if then it will be okay. Or if I will have to go through and put glue down on the actual base here. I don't know. But I think I do recall that now that there was a little bit of an issue with some missing glue. Or maybe that was something else entirely. I don't know. I am totally rambling, guys. It's been a long time since I've done this. You do get out of practice. And then to make it even more complicated and worse, I did not write down notes before I started this whip and chat. That's because my husband was actually going to be leaving the house. And I thought, quick, let's get this in now while I can, while he's not here. Um, just giving me a little bit more freedom. Nobody is home, that means. Except, of course my dog well and the cats but they're a little bit different you know the dog who oh I had a check he is not here by me he was for a little while uh but I guess he decided he did not want to join in on the whipping chat today normally he is back here with any any chance he can have and right now I even left the little entryway here open enough for him he could join me if he wanted and now he's chosen not to so I guess once the challenge is taken away and I allow him back here then he decides, eh, never mind. Challenge is gone. <laughs> or maybe he's enjoying the fact that dad isn't home too. I don't know. Um, wow, so that was a lot about homecoming. But then you have the homecoming game and there's usually like a, a, a halftime celebration. And so my daughter and a friend of hers walked their homecoming banner out onto the football field every class creates a banner during the assembly they're voted on you know who has the best banner and then saturday night there is a semi-formal dance now at my high school the homecoming dance was not a semi-formal event and it always happened immediately after the football game so the whole semi-formal the day later thing is newer to me, but that does seem to be the trend right now, is that's what people seem to do more of. Um, and my daughter had a date for the dance. If you know my daughter, I wasn't sure she would even have any interest in going to something like a homecoming dance. It's just, it's a little bit out of character for her. Well, I don't want to say that. Just, it's a little bit out of her standard comfort zone, I guess. Um, but she did have friends that were interested in going. And I had talked to her about how you know, you can still go with a friend as a date. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. And that it doesn't mean that you're now a couple and you're dating. That's, you know, that's not, that's not how things work. Certainly not anymore today. And she has this friend that they've been friends for several years now. And he's a, he's a neat kid. He's a sweet kid. He's fun. And he's been a pretty good friend lately. Like when she had her MRIs in August while we were waiting and waiting and waiting and they were running over an hour behind, <laughs> um, she was texting this friend a lot that evening. Just, you know, just a nice kid. And so I had mentioned, well, I mean, you could probably go with, you know, this boy. He's a good friend and it might be kind of fun to have someone to go with so you know she'd been talking about it and I even asked her shortly after school started you know have you talked are the two of you going to go to homecoming together are you interested in doing that 
or you know are you thinking about going with somebody and she did say oh i'll probably go with you know this boy uh but nothing was happening and so then when i was driving my older two home from cross-country practice one day she sends this boy a text message that was a pretty overt like hey yeah see no glue right there again um but a very a very clear message of hey are we going to go to this dance together and she never heard back she didn't hear anything back from him and uh, a 15 year old boy they're pretty dense you know i'm thinking uh it could mean absolutely nothing he very well probably completely missed her not so subtle hints but <laughs> then he did finally ask her to this dance but this is how it was done and this was hilarious so i was subbing for a class that day and the two of them had their fourth hour in the classroom right next door to where I was teaching. And after class, the two of them came running up to me because in between classes, um, most teachers like to stand outside their door and, you know, I greet all the kids as they come in and stuff. And so I'm waiting outside and I'm greeting students and the two of them come running over to me. And this boy looks at me and he says, okay, so you want me to go to homecoming and my mom wants me to go to homecoming. So, you know, Ms. T, will you go to homecoming with me? <laughs> and I look at him, I'm like, I'm sorry, but no. And he says, but, but why not? I'm sad, I'm sorry, I, I, I'm not going to homecoming with you. But you know, I'm pointing at my daughter standing right next to him, oops. And I'm like, but you could ask her, like, ask her. And he's like, but why won't you go with me? I said, I'm old. No. Oh, but ask her. So finally, and you can tell, like, he is trying to build up. Good grief. I am, like, totally fumbling here. He's trying to build up courage to be able to turn around <laughs> and ask my daughter to this dance. So finally, he turns to her. And in a very, like, fast-paced, animated way, he's like, okay, so your mom wants me to go to the dance, and my mom wants me to go to the dance, and um, so do you want to go to the dance with me? And Sylvia is just, she's laughing, she's beet red, and she's like, yes! <laughs> and then finally, another friend of hers comes running up, and she's like, oh, did it finally happen? <laughs> It was so cute and I was so glad that I got to be there to see it. It was just darling. And so they did go to the dance together. They had a really fun time. We were able to meet beforehand for pictures. If you follow me on Instagram, there are pictures up on Instagram. I don't want to share any here because I don't have you know, permission for that, but it was fine for me to share on Instagram. So if you do want to see pictures from her homecoming, go look on Instagram. And they did, they just had the best time. And then a couple weekends ago, we celebrated my daughter's birthday and she selected this young man to join her for the afternoon at Pinball Land, which I've spoken about before, but it's a great, a great place in a city not that far from us where there's all kinds of pinball games and um, arcade games ranging from the new to the old. You pay a flat fee and you can play for one hour, two hours, day pass. Anyway, I paid for two hours for them. And so they played a couple hours of video games and then we went across the street and we got pizza. And it was just a really fun, fun afternoon for her. Now, this kid, you may be wondering, you know, okay, so is there more going on with this relationship? Sorry, I have to fill the new uh, putty here a second. Yeah, you know, is there more going on with this relationship, Nitz? And <sighs> officially, no, there's nothing more going on. And very honestly, I mean, neither of them are at an emotional maturity to handle anything more anyway. I mean, some kids at 15 are 
Um, my daughter definitely is not. Um, and I am totally fine with that. I mean, the longer, the longer my kids wait to start getting into relationships, the better. I mean, I just, I don't want it to take up valuable childhood time. I don't want it to become something that complicates their schooling experience. You know, I want them to just enjoy being young. And part of that is obviously hanging out with people of romantic interest too. Um, but I just, I, you know, the longer, the better to see them try to dive into these serious relationships is kind of how I feel about it. I will say that I think a part of her is perhaps a little bit more interested in him than what she would care to admit. Um, but Based on my experiences being with the two of them, I would say that actually he's more into her than she is into him. And between the two of them, I think he may actually be a little bit more mature in that department than what um, my daughter is. So, you know, I don't know. We'll see what ends up happening there. But, you know, if for some reason they would you know, become like an official couple or dating or I don't know I, whatever the teens say today I'm not 100% sure um he is he's a very decent young lad and I would not have a problem with it I have known him for a lot of years through teaching and stuff and he's he's actually he's a good kid and he's funny he's a funny kid when we picked him up Saturday for that Saturday for Sylvia's birthday, <laughs> he was wearing this t-shirt. And Sylvia's like, oh good, you're wearing your good t-shirt. You're wearing, or did you say you're wearing one of your good t-shirts? Well, it was this t-shirt that says, I'm afraid of women. <laughs> and so I laughed. And then I said, and wait, you have more than one of these? He's like, yeah, I, I have five. Five? You have five t-shirts that say, I'm afraid of women? Yeah, I wanna get more. I'm like, wh why? He's like, well, I need to have at least one for every day of the week. Oh, silly me. Of course. Of course you do. <laughs> so just a fun kid. Um, Sylvia also just finished her first high school season of cross country. Or I guess actually, no, she I keep saying she finished it because she thought she's finished her first season, but I don't think she has. I think she has to run yet on Friday. She was under the impression that Friday's run was completely optional because she's not on the varsity team, which in cross country, how that works is varsity is your seven fastest runners. So, you know, when you average their times over the course of the season, your seven fastest runners are the ones who will run varsity for you. And then they are the team that will represent you at the big things like regionals, which is Friday. Um, but there is another run that happens after the regionals run that the kids who did not qualify for regionals are able to do. And Sylvia thought that was completely optional. So she thought her last run was this past Saturday and she had a really nice it was a good, solid run. You know, she did not get a personal record or anything like that, but it was a good, solid run. Um, pretty much was her average, excuse me, her average run time, I would say. And um, then yesterday I got an email from the coach that suggested that, nope, she will be running in that optional run. Additionally, she is an alternate for the varsity team should something happen. That won't, that's not likely. Um, all of the girls who are running varsity, I don't see any reason why none, any of them should not be able to run Friday. None. They're good, solid girls. They aren't going to be doing stupid stuff this week that could, you know put them in a cast or something. I mean, obviously accidents do happen, you know, but it's just with this group of kids, it's just not real likely. Um, the boys are a little bit different. 
And of course, the other thing that could have kept any of them out of regionals would have been their grades. And again, the girls on this team are really solid kids. They are virtually all of them, I think, are actually fantastic students. Um, again, not so much with the boys. There are, <laughs> there are a couple of kids that are ineligible to run, one of whom would have been one of the varsity runners and one of the counted varsity runners, meaning, so the top seven run varsity, but then the top five that cross the finish line from your team are who get you your points. So, and he is like the fourth fastest on the team. So he would have been a counted varsity runner. But if you can't keep your grades up, then, you know, you lose that opportunity. And I mean, I, I do like this kid. He's one that I know quite well. And I had him in class yesterday. And he said, you know, I'm ineligible to run for regionals. And I said, I know. He's like, well, how do you know that? I said, well, because I'm smart. And I'm thinking, I know because I know you're failing two classes. Like, <laughs> that's how I know. And he said, well, I didn't until I got the email this morning. And I'm thinking, and I, I, couldn't, I couldn't say anything to him at that time. I mean, there were other students around and stuff, you know, and you got to be sensitive. But I'm thinking to myself, oh, I guess I did sort of allude to it because he said... He said, how did you know? And I said, well, because I'm smart. You know, I, I knew. And he's like, oh, well, I didn't know till this morning. And I'm like, how did you not know? He's like, well, I got an email this morning that let me know. And I said, I can't remember now how it came up, but I did mention something about, well, you know, you should have been aware of that a few weeks ago already. Um, you know, just talking about the fact that you know your grades aren't good. <laughs> you know, either you're aware of the fact that you are not putting in the work or you are aware of the fact that you are struggling and need additional help. You, I mean, like this, this should not be a surprise or a shock. Like, you know when you're having a hard time in class and it's your responsibility to seek out the required assistance to get the help. It's your responsibility to do the work. And so, you know, his comment about, well, I wasn't aware till I got the email this morning just really surprised me. And I thought, wow, what more like, where are we going wrong in our society that you do? You have a kid like this who really truly did seem kind of surprised at the fact that he couldn't run regionals. I mean, he knows the rules. He knows that you you have to be passing classes. He, I mean, like he understands all the rules and stuff. And he had, I mean, he obviously knew that he was struggling. And I mean, I just, I feel like, wow, how can there be this much of a disconnect um, I don't, I don't know. So it's a little bit, it's a little bit baffling to me. And it's one that I'm kind of thinking about and pondering. And obviously, you know, I understand this kid's home life too. It's, it's not that it's bad, but it is, it's a little bit more chaotic than others. And so I think there's probably not a whole lot of accountability that happens at home. And it's not that he isn't loved because I have definitely seen evidence that, you know, he is loved and cared for. I just think what is so very, very common with parents, and especially in this area, which is a low income area, as parents get so overwhelmed, you know, quite often they are working crazy hours, multiple jobs, just trying to make ends meet. And so you get so overwhelmed that you don't have the energy and even capacity to try and stay on top of your kids too, particularly when they are older teens, you know, when they're teens, by that point, you just, 
kind of assume and hope that your kid knows what they're doing. Um, so anyway, but yeah, so Sylvia, you know, cross country was a love hate relationship for her this year. <laughs> she, there were times including, oh, parent teacher conferences where the whole family had a meltdown in front of the high school. Oh, I kid you not. <laughs> I had my oldest. I really probably should not be sharing this because this is one that she would not be very happy about if I shared with all of you. But I'm going to anyway because for posterity, I feel like it is worth it. So when the day comes that she listens to this and she has her own children, hopefully she'll be like, oh, okay. So this does just happen to people. <laughs> But yeah, she was sitting in front of the high school crying and carrying on about how she hates cross country and I want to quit. And it's because she was feeling overwhelmed with all of her schoolwork plus her practices for cross. And, you know, so she's crying. And then I have my other daughter yelling at my third daughter about where are you going? And then my husband starts yelling at the one kid about don't go anywhere stay right here it's because we'd spent the last 20 minutes trying to find each other my poor son was like what the heck is going on everyone is losing it oh it was so bad all six of us were just a hot mess in front of the high school and so finally when everyone else is departing and it's just me left I'm going to turn around and go in and do parent teacher conferences I turn around and I look at my husband and I said I am so glad we could do this publicly. <laughs> Not one of my better moments either. Um, but yeah, you know, just if you've been there, you know, and you're not alone. Every family has its moments. That wasn't one of ours. It just happened to be in front of the high school for, you know, the entire community to witness. Oh, goody. We're already quite weird and strange around here. And now we've just added to that. So yay us. <laughs> oh boy. But she's doing phenomenal in school. All my kids are doing phenomenal in school, actually. I was so happy with parent-teacher conferences. Generally, I mean, my kids do get really good reviews. And that lets me know that I have to be doing at least something nominally right, you know? <laughs> I spent a lot of time really doubting my parenting skills and are my kids actually going to be okay? And, you know, I think that's a pretty normal parent thing to do. But their teachers are surprisingly reassuring. So I feel like, okay, I must be doing something okay. They all have really good grades. They are kind. Um, they're helpful. Most of my kids engage in class really, really well. Um, yeah, I mean, really just everything that you want to be able to hear as a parent. That not only, obviously, are their grades good, but more important to me is, you know, they act like good humans. <laughs> that is far more important. And so I was really, really pleased to hear all of that. Um, so that's daughter number one in recap which took up a lot of time. We'll see how much editing I end up doing of this video. Uh, or you only will get a couple of kids and maybe I can come back sooner rather than later and finish up the other two. I don't know. So running down the line is daughter number two. She is in eighth grade, which is, you know, like the last year of that middle school section of education, except she also takes two classes at the high school. So she's kind of, she's kind of a foot in both worlds. Um, and indeed, half of her classes are actually high school classes because she is taking algebra as well. But she does get to do that at the middle school. They do offer one algebra class at the middle school. And she also finished up cross country and middle school cross country it is a lot less intense, but even she struggled with the number of practices plus the homework. And then the distance run is a lot shorter. So high school, it is a very, very, very definite 5K. 
Um, it is very carefully marked out. And I mean, like, very definite. Like, I remember at one meet, there was a, a girl who kind of missed that there were hurdles in the way so that it would force you to run on the outside of these hurdles. She just knew you had to come up over this, around this hill and run around. So she was trying to run on the inside of the hurdles and they had to pull her back out and make her go around the outside of the hurdles. I mean, it would have been a difference of five feet, maybe. <laughs> but, you know, it's just so important. No, you need to run this exact course. Middle school doesn't work like that. Most of the runs, first, they're not measured in kilometers. They're measured by miles, sometimes, or meters, other times. <laughs> so there's not even, even a consistency in measurements, <laughs> which irks me. But most middle school meets are a two-mile meet. Sometimes they are... Uh, more closer to a mile and a half. I don't remember what meterage that works out to because as much as I love the metric system, let's face it, I was raised not on the metric system. So I do struggle with being able to just automatically make those conversions, especially when you're talking about like partial things, you know, <laughs> a partial mile. I, I don't know what that works out for meterage just off the top of my head. Um, but she had a really good year two I was really proud of her she is not fast <laughs> she's really not fast frequently she is the slowest girl on the team um and that's that is largely due to how severe her dyspraxia is that that is why um and she she is aware of that she knows that okay, I, you know, there is an actual physical, biological reason why she's so miserable at sports. <laughs> um, but this girl, she still ran and she still kicked it all season long. You know, she was still making PRs as an eighth grader. She actually ended up taking off from her slowest time of the season to her fastest, and I only counted the two mile runs to keep it consistent, she ended up taking off about two minutes of her total time. So I'm so tickled with her. And you know, again, this is for a kid who, she is not athletic. She generally is the slowest girl on the team, which as an eighth grader versus sixth graders, that can be really, really hard for a lot of kids her age to know that younger kids are kicking my butt big time, you know, but she kept doing it. And that's one reason that I do love sports like cross country is it can be, it's, it's so individual that even, even though she will never, ever, ever <laughs> be a varsity runner, she will never have her time counted for the team unless, um, the team you know what I keep putting my hand down there it's driving me nuts oh it's the wrong side so we're just gonna cover it back up that was yes that was the right side so we're gonna cover that up um she keeps running and because she just kept at it all season she kept improving so I'm really proud of her she is planning on running high school next year which We'll see how that goes. That's going to be a challenge. I think that could be a challenge for her coach too. Um, he did work with her this past summer. So like he is aware of her and he is her Spanish teacher right now at the high school. So he does know her, which will help. That will be very, very good. But I think it could be a struggle She's just so slow that I think it, it could be kind of a struggle having somebody that slow on the team. But we'll see. We'll see. And heaven only knows what she's actually capable of doing. She could totally blow all of us out of the water. That, I mean, she may end up eventually coming in with pretty, 
I don't know how to say like standard slow times or pretty normal times for your slowest runners on a high school cross country team, which I think for her would be an excellent accomplishment. I mean, really, truly just a really amazing accomplishment for her. And I really think she, she can do it. I really think she can. So I just give her so much credit. But now, of course, that's done. So now we are in the middle of like this just horrible, agonizing pause of waiting for wrestling season to officially begin. November 13th is when high school wrestling officially commences. And she's ready. She is actually quite excited about the season this year. She has big plans. She has big ambitions. She wants to get this team to state before she finishes high school. So she is, she's pulling out all the stops. She had like a recruitment campaign <laughs> that she ran the week before wrestling signups that I put on social media for her. Um, you know, she is... She is pretty serious about this. <laughs> so Sunday, we actually had to have a planning meeting together, just the two of us, and talk about first, like, what she wants to do. Oh, sorry. I just got a text message from my daughter. Okay. Sorry. That was my oldest daughter who just texted to say that she is not going to cross-country practice today. She has too much homework. Again, you know, that feeling very overwhelmed part of it so but it was sent to both me and her coach so we'll see if her coach responds I'm not sure what's gonna go on there but um so my dog's barking I don't know why my dog is barking that, that's just what he does Elfie stop woofing there's nobody out there oh if you watched that team unboxing that enormous team unboxing that took forever to edit you can experience some of what I go through pretty much on a daily basis, sometimes several times a day, where a delivery person actually does arrive, or sometimes he just thinks a delivery person has arrived, even though a delivery person has not arrived. There's nobody out there. And then he has to go running out there and he needs to like investigate and check it out. <sighs> he seems to have settled down. Maybe he believes me this time. I, I don't know. Um, but yeah, so she had these like recruiting slogans that she created and I put on social media. She has this idea that she wants to try and implement having a wrestler of the week. And I told her that I would buy this unstuffed mini grappling dummy that then I'm just going to stuff with like old. <sighs> Hold on. I'm back. Guess what? There was no one out there. <laughs> I kind of figured there wasn't. My dog is just neurotic. He's like the rest of us. He has regular meltdowns too. <sighs> he fits right in with our crazy, crazy lot. Oh, we're so lucky. <laughs> yeah, nobody outside. Today is actually abnormally warm. It is like mid 60s kind of a weird suffocating warmth outside like it's hard to explain unless like it's not like summer suffocating with the high humidity it's different it's I don't know how to explain it I honestly don't know how to it's like most of our leaves are now off the trees at, well a good solid 50 percent of the leaves have now fallen already our peak is done and over. That was like the very end of last week. And oh, Michigan has a few amazing days every year. Just amazing. And like Friday, Saturday, even Sunday were those days. Sunday, when I went out with Veda to plan wrestling, it was just breath taking oh we drove over the river and it's it's a high bridge over this river which really freaks me out driving over it but 
then you get a really nice view down the river and oh, it was just beautiful. But now, uh, probably 50% of the leaves have all fallen and now they're pretty much on the ground. And um, so it's different. And it's it's just hard to explain that it's it's a weird feeling. It's the feeling of, okay, I know we got rain coming. Um, so kind of that oppressive feeling when you know that you have weather that is advancing upon you. Um, yeah, hard hard to explain. Now, if you recall, about a year ago, we already had our first snow day. <laughs> and it, it for a while, like the last week, it was pretty gosh darn cold. Like the evenings, we maybe have had some flurries and stuff, but no substantial snowfall. I mean, nothing like last year where we actually did have to have a snow day in October. Um, that is not normal. <laughs> but... Um, yeah, so kind of a weird feeling day out there. It's kind of eerie feeling. The other thing too is now I may have much better lighting on this video because I didn't realize that I didn't have my nook light on. I just had like my desk light on. So probably you can actually see better now too. So planning purposes, my daughter also has three new managers to train this year. One is a friend of hers that she recruited, and then two others are high school girls that have brothers on the team, freshman brothers on the team. And Veda is really excited about the extra help, but she is nervous and very unsure of having a leadership type position because she is she is the senior manager. She is expected to train. They're all girls. So she's expected to train. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do at all. <laughs> These other girls on what to do, um, how to do it. So, you know, we had to talk about that quite a bit. And I had to really <laughs> encourage Veda to remember this is her fourth year doing this job. She is the only one out of the four of them that has actually wrestled. She is the only one out of the four of them, even the two with brothers, that really understands the sport. She knows the rules. She knows the sport. And she needs to own that. Um, and that's going to be hard for her, especially with the older girls and especially one of these older girls in particular, I could see being very hard for Veda to find her voice and be able to say that, well, no, this is how you have to do it. Um, Veda is very particular with filming, very particular with filming and in a good way. She hates when she needs to hand off the camera to somebody else because they, they never, they don't do it well, you know. Um, and Veda knows that. So she wants to be very particular with how she trains these girls to do the filming. And so I told her, I, I'm like, you, then, then that's what you need to do. Then you need to be very clear and very explicit. And you need to find a way to be able to tell them, you know, hey, thank you. This is not bad. Next time, why don't you maybe do this instead? Or next time, try this. Um, you know, if I, you got to be able to point out when they don't meet expectations. And of course, that's hard for any of us to be able to do. Um, but for Veda, this is... This is a mountain that she will have to climb. And hopefully it will work out. This is a really, really, really good experience for her. This is really what she needs, especially she is still pretty determined. She is going to one way or another find her place within this sport. You know, she, she wants to do this. She wants to keep doing this. She wants to be involved in this sport for the rest of her life somehow. And so this is precisely the kind of lesson and the kind of thing that she needs to encounter and work through and figure out how, how to manage. Um, 
So we'll see how it goes. I'm hoping, I'm hoping she just gains confidence. You know, when she was little, she was full of confidence. She was the most confident kid. I've talked about it before. I was the same way. You know, as a young child, I was so confident. But then being neurodivergent, you reach about middle school years and suddenly it is painfully obvious that you are different from everybody else and everybody else knows you're different. Whereas before, some of those leadership skills I feel like are actually kind of innate for neurodivergent people um, because we tend to be very fact-based you know we yeah, I, anyway it's hard to explain I don't want to waste too much time on it but um the last several years have been really hard for her she has closed up a lot more become a lot more introverted and afraid to speak up even though she doesn't have to be and that's the one thing that I recognize now that I did not understand when I was her age. So obviously, how can I expect her to understand that? Um, but still, I'm trying to encourage her. And hopefully we have a really good season. But I have to balance the high school wrestling schedule. And then of course there's middle school, which we will attend a couple of those duels because she wants to support her friends on the team in addition for any duels that happen at home she will have to help out with scorekeeping um then of course there is the youth program which less intensive this year my son is not wrestling he is just doing his dance but veda still wants to go once a week to help out with practice we kind of agreed on that twice a week practices are Tuesday and Thursday evenings and twice a week is really just too much by the time you account for all of her responsibilities with high school wrestling plus her schoolwork she's also going to be in quiz bowl um attending both youth practices is is too much for her to do so she is just going to attend once a week to help out with the littles at wrestling. And then the University of Michigan team is the other one that we have to try and balance all of these schedules for. Uh, hold on, my husband just got home, so I'm gonna greet him a minute. I'm back again. So husband is home, he brought me a coffee because he's a good man, he loves me, and I asked him to. <laughs> um, all right, well, I guess I should probably now address the last thing and I'll just have to come back another time and fill you in with my younger two kids more extensively. I kind of left off with um, the four different wrestling schedules that I have to try and balance. And that does include the University of Michigan wrestling schedule, which this year their home dual schedule is so not conducive <laughs> to the high school schedule. It's uh, last year, almost everything was Sunday afternoon. And this year, that's not the case. So this year's definitely more difficult. And we have season tickets, so oh, I really want us to try and go to as many of the duels as we can. Um, but we talked about that Sunday, too, with her planning meeting, and we got some ideas, and we'll make it work. So, But then, you know, why I haven't been around is, you know, just wanting to be real honest with you guys, especially those of you who do listen to my whip and chats. I feel like I owe you some honesty and some greater vulnerability than what the people who just watch my channel for the unboxings and, and which is great. I mean, that's wonderful. Don't get me wrong. But for those of you who actually take the time to listen to entire whip and chats, uh, I, I tend to have a closer connection with you. So I just kind of want to 
make you aware. Um, I have been quite depressed lately. Um, exceedingly so, actually. So if you have been following along, you'll know that this past summer, I kind of was starting a new job. You know, I spent the summer getting credentialed for a new job. Um, I spent a lot of time. I took a lot of tests. I ended up having to spend a lot of money because I had to buy professional liability insurance to go with it. Plus pay for different like background checks and stuff like that. Um, and when I started this process in July, the person who keyed me in on the job was like, oh yeah, there is more demand. There's more need than people available to fulfill it. This is guaranteed work. This is going to be consistent finances coming in. This is financial stability for you. And I was really excited. I was excited about the job at the time. And I was really, really excited about the prospect of having financial stability. And you are aware that um, then the process was more drawn out than what I was expecting, which started to make me nervous. And then if you watched my 500 subscriber Q&A video, I do talk about how at my final orientation, if you will, I was told that, well, we just don't have anyone who needs your needs an ISC is what it's called, Independent Supports Coordinator. We just don't have anyone who needs an ISC. And, but you know, promises, but well, you know, we're hoping to get someone for you soon so you can at least get started. And now that was well over a month ago, meaning the job was a bust, a total bust. The time and the money devoted resulted in nothing. <laughs> the frustration is obviously very, very large. In addition to that, um, this is not good for my feelings of being useless and inadequate. Um, and we are now really, really hurting financially. Um, my car needs a new transmission, but of course we're still having to make payments on the car for about another two years. Well, it ha oh, it was just, oh, I see now what it was. Okay, so actually it's okay. It was just putty on there. Well, dang it all. Now I'm making a mess on my cute little thing here. But yeah, my car needs a new transmission, but we still owe about as much as what a transmission costs on the vehicle, you know, thanks to, and just being interest where <laughs> we've been paying on it for some time, but we still owe a huge amount of the initial balance, much like my student loans. Um, but that too, I mean, we needed a vehicle, we needed a vehicle, and I, anyway, um, I had, I mean, this other, this job, it was promised to be a good job. I thought we wouldn't have to be struggling to make our house payments anymore. You know, I thought, oh, things like a transmission, huge, but I mean, definitely a huge, huge problem and setback, but, you know, and if, you know, give it a couple of months and we'd be able to find a way to afford that. And now we're back to, no, we, we can't get a new transmission. I just have to keep driving it till it completely is dead. Um, and then I don't know what we'll do after that because we still owe so much on it. Um, just overwhelming discouragement and despair 
<laughs> to the point that I met with my psychiatrist a couple weeks ago. And actually she had a student there with her that she asked, you know, is it okay if this student sits in and maybe ask you some questions? And I said, oh yeah, that's fine. And I'm thinking this probably will be a good one for her, but I think I was. I think I was a really good example for this student to see where, yeah, I am really, really depressed and it is largely situational. I cannot find good employment. Substitute teaching, I'm glad I did renew that license this past summer because I wasn't going to because I thought I had a really good job lined up. It's very minimal income coming in, especially because the schools did get smart. They all have permanent substitute teachers now. So being able to find subbing jobs is hard. I'm averaging about once a week not even slightly slightly less than once a week I can go in and sub which I mean by the time you take out your taxes and stuff it's like 60 bucks a week that's that's not enough to even really be helpful um and certainly not enough to buy a new transmission <laughs> So explaining all this to her and, you know, explaining how I feel just utterly useless. Um, I have degrees that get me nowhere. I have experience that's all wrong. I can't find a decent job. I can't make money. My family is struggling. I can't seem to fix it. Um, so I've been so dark. <laughs> and so down that even doing the things that I normally enjoy, like my channel and doing my whip and chats with you guys have been unappealing. Um, and that's pretty classic with depression. I know a lot of you do understand, but this student was you know, she just she didn't really know what to say because it's it's not it's not a medication fix and in fact in this situation especially there's you know there isn't anything that I did wrong you know I, I knew that I had to find a better job and I got a lead for one I did all of the work I put in all of the time and I thought I had this job and then to receive that kind of a letdown at the end of it, I mean, it's it's not that I did anything wrong and everything, everything pointed to, this was a really good move for me. This was exciting. This could give me a new sense of purpose, um, everything. And then it didn't. And I, I don't hold anything against the friend that pointed me in the direction of this job. She didn't know. In retrospect, I am kind of upset with the organization that I am contracted through because they had to have known. When I started this application process and started the whole thing, they had to have known, they had to have been aware that no, actually we don't have any work. Um, and they just weren't upfront and honest with me about it. And that, that's left me a little bit discouraged and very leery about being able to trust them. You know, should I suddenly have employment through them? You know, should they suddenly get people who need an ISC and are interested in having me serve as their ISC? I now am kind of nervous about it because I don't know how much I can trust the company that I should at least be able to get a little bit of guidance from. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's, that's why I have been so absent is I have been very depressed and I am still really struggling to get through it. Like my psychiatrist said, she's like, you know, it sounds like if you could just 
have an income, you actually would probably be doing much, much better. And I said, that that's accurate because here's, here's the thing. There is, there are things that I am doing that are beneficial and mean something to me and I, and mean something to other people. I, you know, I, I like being able to be as involved as I am with the kids' lives. It is overwhelming and really difficult, but you know, I, I like being able to participate in their sporting activities and I like getting to know the kids on their teams. I like being able to sub occasionally, you know, even there, I've talked about that in the past and going back to sub full time. I don't think even if it were an option, I don't know that that would be a good thing for me to do. Um, and like I said, I, I don't want to talk about that now because it is something that I've already talked about before, but I really value the relationships that I have developed with my students. Um, I love being as involved in the wrestling program as what I am. I love doing my YouTube channel. I like being able to reach out to all of you. I like, I like being able to help people, you know, sift through the world of available goods within the crafting community, specifically diamond painting. You know, there's a lot out there and a lot of it is junk. And I like being able to kind of show you what works, what doesn't work. I enjoy doing that. I enjoy connecting with some of you on a much deeper level than just, you know, the superficial YouTube video. Um, you know, I've enjoyed getting to know you guys. I, so I feel like there is, there is value in my life. There are things that I am doing that I feel like are valuable and I, I typically at least do enjoy doing, but because we are not okay financially and because I am not providing I am not doing okay in general. So I just had a kid get home from school just now. Possibly two of them are coming in. I think I have two that are actually coming home today. So I probably should wrap this up and try and get it edited and put it out for you guys. Next week is Halloween here. If, uh, if things go well, I'd like to try and come back and give you a Halloween update next week. Um, my son has his first dance for his dance team Friday evening. Unfortunately, it doesn't sound like I'll be able to go because I think I do have a daughter running now. Um, so we're going to have to divide and conquer. And because my daughter's thing is located, well, actually the distance is about the same, but hers starts earlier and lasts longer that will have to be my responsibility <laughs> and my son's thing starts later and is shorter so that will be my husband's thing to do just you know he's the one who does actually have a job so he gets priority <laughs> for that kind of stuff um but yeah that's that's the scope of what's been going on with me it's i mean it's not you guys um, it's not even that I don't like YouTubing um, or, you know, another thought that I had too that concerned me and I was kind of, what are those little C's? On? I think so. I think there's just two fives here. And then that is a letter at the bottom, I think. Okay. Um, yeah, must be. Must be. See? Yeah, these. So then that goes at the bottom, like those are the claws. I get it. Okay, it's kind of cute. Um, but then I had the thought too, like the last video that I was able to put out was the video all about my um, brand new membership option. And I thought, oh man, what if these people feel like, well, see, nobody wants to become a member. So now she doesn't want to have anything to do with us anymore. No, no, no. That's, that's totally not, <laughs> that's not the case at all. Um, if you're like membership, what there, my last 
video that I did post was about the membership options. You are welcome to watch it. Of course, nobody, the anticipation is never that you guys need to become a member um, or anything like that. It's just, it is something that I wanted to offer in case there happened to be anyone who was interested. There are additional things that I can do and offer you by being a member. Um, but yeah, I was very concerned that it's like, oh my gosh, the last video that I was able to make myself do was my membership video. And now they are, they're all going to think that I've turned on them and that that's not the case, guys. <laughs> that's really not the case. <sighs> all right. Well, I guess it is time to say goodbye, but let's take a little quick look at how this is progressing because I want to kind of end, if I can, on a more happy note. I mean, I feel like I I tried to do a pretty good job of giving details and, and sharing some of the fun stuff that's happened before, you know, really going downhill there. Uh, <laughs> but I want to also turn this around and we can quick look at this together too and see what this is looking like a minute. This is the typical kind of thing that I normally would do with a... Uh, weekend challenge project, which is something else that I haven't been able to do for a few weeks. Um, where, you know, it's a smaller little diamond painting project, call it a weekend challenge. I give little updates over the course of my project. And then at the end, I show you the completion and I give a, a short little review. What do I think of it? So this is what I have so far of this one. And it's cute. Like this is really, really cute. If I manage to get this done, prior to editing this, I will go ahead and put it up. I don't know though that that's going to happen because typically I do my editing when I'm like waiting for kids and I have to leave the house pretty soon to start waiting for kids. Um, but if I do, I will put it up and so you can see the finished thing. Otherwise, I will try and remember to bring it back out with my next Whip and Chat, which I mean, hopefully, Lord willing, it will be sooner than my last one. But yeah, this is super duper cute. I love owls. Um, I love autumn. I mean, I'm I'm okay with Halloween, you know, but really I love autumn, which is probably why, you know, I like this one so much. I'm really excited to get that one done. But for right now, I'm going to say adios. This was probably will end up being a pretty long whip and chat. If you did stick around, thank you so, so much. Please um, remember to like, comment, subscribe if you haven't and are interested. But otherwise, like I always say, please just be kind. Practice kindness. You never know what someone's going through. You don't know their current situation. And so just extending that extra patience and kindness will go a really, really long way. And I hope that you are shown the same level of respect in return. And I hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful day. I'll see you again real soon.